Good morning. It is a beautiful morning today, and hopefully on Sunday it'll be a beautiful morning also. Remember, we're coming to the end of April, and we're moving into the middle of spring, and it is a wonderful time to give blessings to the Lord because we are surrounded, surrounded by the glory of the growth and the beauty of our earth. I would like to remind you that if anyone is interested in joining in and what we are planning to do next month is to, and we will put out the details, but uh, we would like to start our membership classes and we invite anyone who is interested in learning about the history or the beliefs of our church to join in. And we are planning to use a, a group video in some way and like I said we will be working out the details but if you are interested please contact the office and we will add your name for so that we know that you are interested we are looking at an uncertain future due to the fact we do not know when we can gather again but we can give praise to the Lord because we are safe and we are healthy. Let us remember that. Another uh, announcement before we get into our scripture reading. The uh, Middle Pennsylvania District sent out an email uh, just yesterday to us with guidance for congregations regarding uh, our in-person worship. Uh, whether when we can come back to worship here uh, at Clover Creek. Uh, in following state guidelines uh, and out of a desire to be respectful and caring for the whole community, it looks like uh, the state recommendations that we not meet are going to continue for the foreseeable future. Uh, when the easing does happen, we will probably be uh, requested to wear masks. At the present, the wearing of masks is supposed to be whenever you're outside uh, and, and in, uh, in public spaces and areas where there are a lot of people. Um, the, generally, the guidance has been uh, if you're uh, going to be less than six feet proximity to people um, uh, or closer, you should wear a mask. That helps protect the other person, not only yourself, but uh, more importantly, it protects the other people around you. Since we are in a house uh, this morning, in a God's house, and since most of you who are watching this video are sitting in the way back of the sanctuary, even further back outside the sanctuary, beyond the overflow area and at home, uh, Pastor Barb will not be wearing a mask for this service. I don't think it's required yet to wear a mask, but I thought it would be good to set a good example and maybe help you get used to the idea of wearing a mask. So when I put this mask on, my wife said that I looked good. And I'm still wondering what she meant about by that. But uh, anyway, in that spirit, we move to our scripture reading this morning. We're going to the, uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, 
And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. But they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Pastor Barb will now bring a message. Yes, I do have a mask, <laughs> but I choose not to wear it right now because everybody is so far away, so far away. When I was growing up in my home church, there was a picture in the back that was called The Road to Emmaus, and it showed three figures walking down this road surrounded by trees. <clears throat> they were not distinct figures, but you could see that there were three figures. And this is one of the stories of Easter, and I accepted it until I came to this scripture and I was studying it and I thought, what were they doing on the road to Emmaus anyway? And I think that comes to mind now because we are so restricted on where we can go. Uh, we can travel anywhere, but everything's closed basically. So what would be our reason to go there? What was their reason to go to Emmaus? The story itself starts out later the same day. The same day? What day? So you have to go back up into the scriptures and then you discover this is the first day of the week. This is Sunday. In fact, this is Easter Sunday, what we call Easter Sunday. And they clarified that later on. They said about how the women went to the tomb and it was empty and early this morning and how some of the disciples had gone and it was empty and they didn't see any. They didn't see him. They didn't see a body, saw nothing. And they were on their way to Emmaus. So I went into some of the uh, writings concerning this scripture, the commentary. And one of the commentaries says, they were going home. They were from Emmaus. So they were going home. Why were they going home? Where were the other disciples? The other disciples were still in that room in Jerusalem, talking excitedly about what do you think this means? What do you think this means? What do you think's happening? But these, Cleopas and his friend, were on their way home. Why? There was nothing else to do. There was nothing else to be concerned about. And they brought that out when the stranger came up to him and said, what are you talking so energetically with each other about? And he said, oh, don't you know? And they were sad and they were so quiet. Jesus of Nazareth, he was crucified. He was a prophet. He was mighty indeed and before God. And they crucified him. And moreover, we hoped that he would be the redeemer of Israel, past tense. We hoped that he was the redeemer, past tense. He's dead. 
He's not going to redeem Israel. He's dead. You see, they had it in their mind. Jesus was dead. It didn't take witnesses of women coming to them, talking of angels, telling them that he had risen. Mm -mm. They saw him. He was dead. Dead is dead. You know dead is dead. Dead is dead. And their hopes were dead. And now they were going home because there was nothing else for them in Jerusalem. There was no more hope for them in Jerusalem. If this was going to be a normal Sunday, I would say, we're here, we gather together, we praise God, we acknowledge each other, we lift each other up in prayer, and then we go home. But the hope is that we go home with hope. Hope in the risen Lord. Now, as they walk along, you could say, what is wrong with these people? Didn't they see Jesus? Couldn't they? They, they followed him all over the countryside. In this day of wearing masks in public places, having gone to the store, it's been quite a challenge to recognize our friends. <laughs> it could be by the sound of their voice. It could be the way they walk, you know. It's really hard because we can't see their faces anymore. And you must remember that Cleopas and his friend, they knew Jesus was dead. He was dead. <laughs> so they weren't expecting to see him. At this point, the stranger starts talking to them about the scripture, giving them reinforcement, starting with Moses, going up to the prophets, saying how this Messiah would have to suffer and undergo trials and tribulations before he could come into his glory. And they're all, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, 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 yeah. But they were still sad and depressed and no hope. They finally come to Emmaus, and the stranger looks like he's going to go on. Eh, no, 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 it's almost dark. Come on, come on, come on, come on. you got to come and eat. So they sit down to eat. Now, at this point, I did a Google search. I love Google. Now, Google is fine, except you must be careful about where you end up at. You can go down a lot of rabbit holes, and you can end up with some really strange ideas out there, because just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. That's just me giving your little lesson about safety on the internet. But I found a reputable source, and it talked about this blessing and the breaking of bread. And the most interesting thing I found was that if there was bread involved, it was a meal. If there was no bread, it wasn't a meal. And when we think about our meals today, where we have our vegetables and we have our starches and we have our meats, etc., etc., we forget that in this day and time, bread was the staff of life. You only ate meat on high holidays, and you'd have to go to the, uh, the temple to have it slaughtered. Meat was a scarcity. It was a rarity. Um, you were at the mercy of the weather for your vegetables. They didn't have a food system that could bring the food in, and you'd go to the market and supermarket and buy it. It wasn't coming in from Mexico and Canada and other Brazil and other strange places. No, it had to be all grown locally. So... And the blessing that was done by the stranger on the bread is a classic blessing. And it goes, when I find it, it's basically, blessed are you, our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. If you consider bread the staff of life, and without bread, and remember, when Jesus was in the wilderness and the devil was tempting him, the first temptation was, you're hungry. Turn these, these rocks into loaves of bread, and you won't be hungry anymore. Bread was the source of food. And in today's world, where we're so afraid of carbohydrates, you know, it's, it's very astounding to us to know that bread is the staff of life. The stranger blessed the bread and broke it 
and then they saw him. Remember when I said when going to the market, sometimes you can only tell people by the sound of their voice. Sometimes you can only tell them by the how they move, their actions. And they knew Jesus by the breaking of the bread. And I'm sure that they had been discussing over those Saturday, Friday and Saturday, they had been talking about the fact that last meal when Jesus had taken the bread, blessed it and broken and said, here is my body broken for you. Here is my body broken for you. In the Jewish tradition, this blessing on the bread is the past, giving thanks to the Lord for nourishment and food, but it is also a future, showing faith that God will continue to sustain us, to give us bread. The two strangers were on the way, Cleopas and his friend were on their way to Emmaus, ran into a stranger, didn't know who he was. You say, why? I will tell you something. I have seen many pictures of Jesus, but you know, depending on what culture or nation these pictures are coming out of, he can look very, very different. How would I know if I came and saw Jesus? How would I know? I know the scriptures. I have sight. They knew him by a simple act, breaking of the bread, because could not eat before you broke the bread. Simple act, a blessing upon it. Don't be too harsh on Cleopas. How many times have we walked past Jesus and not known him? How many times have we ignored him? How many times have we given up hope? How many times have we been on that road to Emmaus? Just going home, nothing here. I give up, I don't care. How many times? How many times? Remember, he walks amongst us. He moves amongst us. And by the simple acts, we can recognize that he is here amongst us. We are in a time of isolation and separation. We are also in a time when our grass is starting to grow. So I challenge you, you call yourselves disciples of this Jesus, the Messiah. If Jesus was willing to do simple acts of kindness, are we not as his disciples called to do the same? Open your eyes, look around you in your daily life and see if there is a way that you can reach out and touch other people with kindness. Simple acts that shows that there is hope in the world. They are not alone. It is not hopeless. We have hope. They ran back to Jerusalem all excited. We saw Jesus. They said, yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw, they said, okay, Peter came. He, he told us, he told us. And later on, Jesus actually appears to all of them, except for Thomas. And then later on, he shows up for Thomas. And finally, they see Jesus. But on that road to Emmaus, they couldn't see Jesus because they had no hope. Hold on to your hope, folks. Hold on to your hope. And then you will see the Savior. Let us come together in prayer. God of heaven, master of the universe, Lord to those who believe. Many of us are feeling lost, dazed and confused, walking our own road to Emmaus, trying to take in all the news of the day and trying to make sense of it. While our technology makes communication with loved ones possible and we, and we revel in that, we appreciate it, we're happy for that, 
This technology also means that we hear opinions and, and information, some of it misrepresented, and we hear it on a daily basis. Help us, we pray, to sort out what we need to know and what, what is only designed to manipulate. We don't know how bad this virus really is, but we do know that it kills. And so out of love of neighbor, we pray for strength in maintaining resolve to practice healthy behavior, such as wearing masks for the sake of neighbor. And out of love for ourselves, we pray that we might continue in good hygiene, such as hand washing. Keep us calm, Lord, in your peace and in your hands. Keep us from reactionary behavior that has no possible outcome other than harm. We pray for our leaders, Lord, and uplift them, all of our leaders, the world uh, political leaders, business leaders, school leaders, and our leaders at home. So often stress leads to bad choices. And so we ask your presence, especially for those who are facing having to make decisions. Help them to maintain the path led by Jesus Christ, a path of non-blaming, non-violence, a path that points to a godly way of being in this world. Help us, we pray, to be alert for and sensitive to needs that are around us. Don't let the walls of our houses be a reason to barricade our hearts and our compassion. We pray for those who are in need of care, for those who are in need of basic care, those who are running out of necessities for living. And we hold in our hearts those who are dealing with health issues as well. While the world is consumed with only one issue, we know that life goes on for many people and there are th things happening that need your attention and your presence with people, Lord. We pray for your provision and your healing in accordance with your will. For your ministries, we ask for guidance and for blessing. We ask for direction on how we might proceed in changing times with the ministries that we have supported as a body of Christ. Guide us, we pray, in being open to creative solutions which enable us to provide for brothers, sisters, and neighbors. Allow us to rest, Heavenly Father, in the knowledge that all things work in this universe to point to you. Help us to recognize the risen Lord in the lives and testimonies of those around us. Bless our days in being able to break bread in each other's presence once again in the spirit of Christ Jesus and give us peace in knowing that the future is yours. And may we give ourselves into that future so that we might help make it a reality in our lives and in others' lives today. This we ask, Lord, for your glory and your honor. Amen.